Hi everyone and welcome back. This time I've got a pencil sharpener review for you. Okay, as you can see I've got a small selection of pencil sharpeners here. Um, I'm going to be taking a look at two hand crank sharpeners and a small selection of sort of brass, magnesium, um, just regular metal pencil sharpeners. I'll come to those in a minute though, I'll just slide that out of the way. First of all, we'll take a look at these two. You probably notice that none of these are um, battery powered or electric. Um, I don't like them at all, they tend to eat pencils, um, you know, and you have to put batteries in them and plug them in and all that kind of thing. So, right now, uh, I favour the manual type pencil sharpeners. So, let's take a look at these two. We've got the Swordfish just here and the MR Mobius and Rupert just there. Um, both very similar size, they're both made out of plastic, um, but they are very different in fact. So take a quick look at the specs. The Swordfish will only sharpen 8mm pencils, it won't sharpen anything like that, as a large Conti pastel pencil or anything, it will only do regular pencils. And if you can see the jaws in there, they're metal jaws and they leave marks um, on your pencils when you're sharpening them. That doesn't bother me, I know it's an issue for some people. Um, but on the other hand, the m &R, that's got a rubber coated jaw in there, so that doesn't leave marks on your pencils. And also the diameter of the opening, um, this will take um, 8mm pencils, standard 8mm pencils, and it will also take anything up to 11.5mm pencils, so this one will actually take uh, the larger size um, Conti pencils, uh, pastel pencils. Um, and one of the other differences is if we take a quick look at the back. Um, I'll try and do it without getting any reflection of anything on it. Well, basically, the the Swordfish has no adjustment for you know various degrees of sharpness on your pencil, but the M and R. Um, has this button just here, I don't know if you can make out, but it'll go from completely sharp to a fairly dull point, um, and that sort of that will rotate about four times. So you've got a, a huge amount of adjustment there from anything from you know razor sharp pencil to a very blunt pencil, and all the various degrees in between. So you've got loads of adjustment with that one, which is a really nice feature. And also, they both come um, with one of these little desk clamps or table clamps, so you can clamp them um, on the corner of your table. Personally, I don't use them. I prefer to use uh, the pencil sharpeners as they are. They're more portable, more mobile, so it doesn't matter if I'm working at my desk or working at the table or what room I'm working in. Um, I can just quickly and easily take that with me um, and just use it like that wherever I am. It's, it's a lot simpler. But they both come with the, the desk clamp anyway, if that's important to you. And also, I don't know if I mentioned or not, they both have an auto stop. Uh, did I mention that? I don't think I did, did I? I can't remember. But anyway, they have, they've, both, <laughs> they've both got an auto stop on them. Um, now, price, this one um, is on sale on Amazon at the moment in the UK for £9.99. I bought mine um, shortly after my battery pencil sharpener um, broke, uh, which was last year sometime, and I was I think it was about eight pounds I paid for this, but they've gone up since then, so they're just under ten pounds now. And this one, which is far superior to that one, this one um, is on sale for fifteen pounds eighty-seven, which is a good price actually, um, and that's also on Amazon. Um, but it's, I think that's a good price because I've seen this on sale um, at other places for upwards of £20. So um, I'll put links in the description anyway so you can go and check them out on Amazon. Now, like I mentioned before, um, the, the Swordfish, I'll just do a quick demonstration. I've got a selection of pencils here which look like they could do with uh, sharpening a little bit. Um, the Swordfish 
will only take pencils up to, let's move these out of the way, up to um, 8mm in diameter. Now the Derwent sketching pencil is just about that, about 8mm. And this one is a standard hexagonal pencil which is um, a little bit thinner. Um, and it'll take these no problem at all. It's more or less what it's designed for, just regular pencils. And when the handle goes loose like that, that's the auto stop kicking in and it won't sharpen your pencil anymore and uh, wear away any more than is necessary. So that's a lovely, nice sharp point on there. But you can see the teeth marks, can't you, along the pencil there as well. But that's a really nice job that that's done of that. So we'll try the thicker pencil, um, the round diameter one. It's a bit of a squeeze to get it in, it's almost scraping the paint off to be honest. You kind of have to wedge it in a little bit. Um, and this pencil is the same diameter as the Derwent Pastel pencils, um, which is you know a bit thinner than the, the Conti ones, which will not fit that at all. Another thing I've noticed as well, um, the auto stop. When you're using, particularly using the, the thicker diameter pencils, the auto stop doesn't always work. It does sometimes, but not always. It worked that time, that's good. Oh, and it's broke the lead. Well, there we go. Let me just try that again. Did I, did it? Was it pushed in far enough? Yes, the lead's, broke. Yes, it's, uh, the lead's broke. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> this is an honest review. These things happen. So, what goes on there? You'll notice that this turns and that will pull out. And if the lead breaks, it usually gets stuck in that barrel just there. And you can usually see that it has because you can see the lead. It's going to be very hard actually to, to get into, but you can just see the lead in there. Okay, I'm going to have to get something to poke that out, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, that's taken care of. I've got the lump of lead that was stuck in there. That's <laughs> That never normally happens with this pencil sharpener, I have to say. That could be um, something to do with the pencil. It might be the fact that the pencil might have fractures. Um, you know it on the lead inside the wood casing. Let's just give it another go. There we go. That's it, that's better. And you can see that's quite a nice point on there. In fact that's a very nice point on there, it's really nice and sharp. So it's a good little workhorse, uh, it's a reasonable price, but it's lacking features and it'll only sharpen various sizes of pencils. So now let's try the MR. Just a regular Dixon Ticonderoga hexagonal pencil. In fact, I'll just show you the adjustment on here. I'll just turn that all the way to the blunt setting. There's a little bit of wood just left on there. In fact, let me just give that another quick turn. It's um that's better, it's just taking the, uh, the wood off there and you can see that that's quite a blunt point on there now I'll put it on the sharpest and remember you can have any degree of sharpness between um, how blunt that was and then super sharp you can adjust it to whatever you want there we go Again, that's a lovely, nice, sharp point. If we just compare that with the swordfish, 
Not really a lot of differences though. Not that I can see. Maybe the swordfish is a fraction, maybe one millimetre longer, but it's, it's you know neither here nor there. Okay, and I'll do the larger sized um, Derwent sketching pencil, which is a round barrel. Again, that's a really, really nice point. If I compare that to the swordfish, this one here is a swordfish. Okay, there's, there's not much in it really, is there? Virtually identical. And they both give you a very nice, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it a long point, but it's a long regular point, a very decent regular point, let's say. Um, the Coombe Long Point Sharpener, um, which is a two part sharpening process that will give you a super long point in fact I've got one just here that was done with a long point sharpener and if I compare the other two with that one I get them nice and level you can see a little bit a little bit of difference there but it's not massive Right, okay, so now I'll try one of these large diameter pastel pencils. Now, pastel pencils are notoriously difficult to sharpen. Um, in fact, <laughs> I really don't like sharpening pastel pencils because you usually have to do it with a knife blade and be very careful about it, and it takes ages. Um, and it really sort of takes away your focus when you're actually drawing you know you, I just seem to spend too long sharpening pastel pencils and it actually puts me off um, doing drawings with pastel pencils purely because of that reason but this one this sharpener has took the stress away of all that it, absolutely amazing go you get a perfect sharp point every single time and it doesn't break pastel pencils I mean look at that isn't that fantastic I mean that really is a, a fine point for a pastel pencil really impressed with that so there you go you can sharpen your pastel pencils in this one you can also sharpen pastel pencils in this one and get the same effect but like I explained, if your pastel pencils are larger than a Derwent pastel pencil, um, you know, like a Conte or something, you've got no chance, it just won't go in there. So, okay, with all things considered, um, if you're looking for, you know, a reasonably, reasonably priced pencil sharpener um, that's good quality, and all you ever do is sharpen just regular graphite pencils or even coloured pencils um, with the same diameter or the smaller um, pastel pencils and you're not at all worried about having the wood casing chewed up uh, by the metal teeth in there and of course you don't need any adjustment well go for the swordfish it's a great little sharpener um, you know a very reasonable pr price by the way, the, I can't remember if I mentioned or not, they're both plastic. Although the swordfish looks like it's metal, it is in fact plastic. Um, they're both a similar size. and I'd, I'd class them both as a smaller type hand crank sharpeners because you can get them a lot larger than this. Um, but these are just a nice size for on your desk, particularly if you're sort of limited to space. Um, but on the other hand, if you want a pencil sharpener that just does everything, you've got all the full adjustment on the back there, You've got rubberized grip so it won't chew your pencils up. Um, and even though I demonstrated the largest wood case pencil that I've actually got, which is the Conti Pastel, um, there, it, it will take pencils a lot larger than that. I mean, there's still loads of um, <laughs> wiggle room in there, if that's even a thing. Um, so you can go a lot larger. It'll take pencils you know, a lot thicker than that. I mean, really, I, I think it's a Swiss Army knife of pencil sharpness, to be honest. It just does everything. So if you're looking for that type of thing, 
I think that's probably the best that you'll find. Um, and like I say, at £15 on Amazon right now, I think it's an absolute bargain. Um, and like I say, I'll link them both in the description below. Right, okay, so on to these. Okay, you're probably thinking, well, why even bother talking about these when you've just shown us the ultimate pencil sharpener? Well, <laughs> as good as they are, they won't actually, let me just grab a pencil, they won't actually completely sharpen your pencils all the way down. You can see how much is sticking out there. Now, if I sharpen that anymore, I'm not going to have any pencil left, a little grip in there. So really, with these, although they're brilliant, you can only kind of sharpen your pencils down to that sort of length. Um, before the pencil sharpener won't accept them anymore. So that's where um, that's where these things come into play. You will actually um, need one of these or several of these um, to actually finish sharpening your pencils off with. Um, you know when they get so short. Um, now the Coon Long Point Sharpener um, is a brilliant sharpener. I think. <laughs> Probably everybody's got one of these, so I'm not going to actually demonstrate for you, demonstrate this for you now. I've already done that in a, one of my previous videos, um, drawing supplies videos, so I won't bother with that now. Um, but again, it's a German pencil sharpener that's very high quality um, and definitely worth having. And I'll also put a link in the description um, for these as well. Now, onto these little uh, brass sharpeners. Most of these I've had for a very long time. Um, except that one, that's a fairly recent purchase. Um, I bought this one several months ago. Um, and again, that's made by M&R. I don't know if you can see that. M&R is actually, I think, you know, the world's best pencil sharpener manufacturer, to be honest with you. Um, they make, them, <laughs> without doubt, they're the most precision and high quality pencil sharpeners. Um, out there, pers I personally think. There, there is a few exceptions, like I just mentioned, the Coom um, is a brilliant one, and there's another one which is the, the Dukes, D-U-X, which is also made in Germany. Uh, it's a very expensive sharpener as well. I've mentioned this before in one of my videos. Um, you've got three adjustments there for three different sharpener settings. Solid brass, and again, made in Germany. If you're going to buy a pencil sharpener, make sure it's made in Germany. They are always the best. I'm probably going to get lots of comments now saying, no, they're not. These are better. And honestly, the German pencil sharpeners, I've, I've had loads of different pencil sharpeners in my time. And the ones that have always been the best are the ones made in Germany. You know, with, without doubt. I think the more experienced artists out there that have gone through a whole load of pencil sharpeners in the time will probably agree with me on that but I'm sure there's people out there that love you know whatever pencil sharpeners um, but eventually I think you'll end up getting to like these um, quite a lot so that one's made by um, Dukes um, it's quite expensive they're about 15 pounds yeah I know it's ridiculous isn't it it's as dear as that um, but I bought that years ago and it's, it was my main pencil sharpener. I still use it, um, but over the years I've tried other things out. All three of those there, let's move that one out of the way so we don't get confused. All three of those there um, are made by m &R. Now you don't need to buy all three of these at all, um, but I would recommend that if you're going to go for a hand crank sharpener, maybe get a double hole sharpener so you've got a choice uh, again of uh, pencil diameters that you can fit in there um, you know that's really useful um, these are ideal for sort of putting in your pocket and going out sketching with if all you're using is just a, a regular you know graphite pencil um, but I personally like this one it's a double wedge um, again it's like I say m and stamped on the back so I know it's a genuine one um, solid brass and it gives very similar points to this one. 
Um, I bought this to try out and it's virtually the same as this. I've got a large hole there, a larger diameter pencils and then a smaller one just there. And it gives a very similar um, angle when you sharpen the pencil. Now another important thing that I always look for with pencil sharpeners um, is the shape of the blade. You'll probably notice all the blades on all my um, little metal sharpeners, they all, well most of them all say um, M&R made in Germany. You can buy um, refills, not refills, um, spare blades for them quite easily. They're not hard to find, they're readily available. Um, they're also M&R blades and I always buy the pencil sharpeners with a uh, sorry yeah pencil sharpeners where they take blades that are curved on one end and flat on the other purely for the reason that spare blades are really easy to get and you'll notice that every single one of the pencil sharpeners in here all have that shape to the blade so that I can just replace it really easily with the same blade because some pencil manufacturers make um, Pencil, so pencil sharpener manufacturers make pencil sharpeners um, with all different size and styles of blades but the most commonest one um, is this shape so I recommend always buying a pencil sharpener whatever it may be with that, that shape of blade I mean this, this little magnesium one here I've had this for over 20 years it's made in Germany, it says West Germany, well it doesn't say West Germany, it says W Germany but it means West Germany so that's a clue to um, dating it. So it's a good few years old, I know it's over 20 years old and I got it second hand um, with some second hand art materials that I got once. Um, and it's been a brilliant little sharpener and again I can just keep replacing that blade over and over again and the body of the pencil sharpeners themselves, you know, they never break, they never wear out, they will last you a lifetime. Here's another um, favourite of mine. In fact, let's get all of these out. Um, that one there is another one by Coombe. Um, it's not a long point or anything, it's just a standard double hole. Um, it's magnesium, nothing special. Um, this one is by Faber Castell. Uh, I think, is it? Yes. Um, and you may notice on there it says colour and normal. So you've got two choices there for coloured pencil or normal pencil. One is slightly um, more of a blunter angle and the other one is a slightly longer angle. And that can be very useful because I've found that, and I can't explain this, but I've found that some pencils for some strange reason just sharpen better uh, in different pencil sharpeners with different sharpening angles. I don't know why. Maybe it's something to do with the wood, the thickness of the wood, whether it's hexagonal or whether it's a round casing. Um, so it's always good to have a, you know, a small selection of pencil sharpeners to take care of you know, all your needs. That one, I think that, well, that was a Koh-i-Noor, um, although it doesn't say so on it, but it was sold to me as a Koh-i-Noor. Just basically the same as that, just another double hole sharpener, the holes are the same size. Um, but yeah, I mean, my recommendation would definitely um, go for the MR pencil sharpeners, particularly the brass ones, and I'll tell you why. They're really heavy in the hand, which is a good thing because it's a lot more stable when you're actually sharpening the pencil. Whereas these smaller, lightweight magnesium ones, they're so light that they kind of twist a little bit with the pencil when you're turning them. But the heavier weight brass just feels so much nicer um, when you're sharpening your pencils. So let's just put these away. So I'd either go for that one or that one, whichever design you like the best, and that one. And I would say that they are the three best pencil sharpeners going, apart from that one there, which is another amazing pencil sharpener. And of course, the long point which is a classic, got to have one of those. Um, but just for regular pencil sharpening I would recommend those. Okay so all the uh, sharpeners that we've looked at today I'm going to try and find as many um, Amazon links for them as I can 
um, in both the UK and the USA so you can go and um, check them out if you want to. Um, yeah so there we go, I hope that's been helpful to you. Um, thanks very much for viewing and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.